Greetings fellow YouTube brethren, how are you? Okay, welcome back to the 12 string build. Today, I uh, basically want to speak to you about uh, nuts for this 12 string build. This is the tricky one guys, I know we've done some drilling, I know we've done some headstock remodelling, I know we've done all that, and I know I've talked to you about bridges and stuff, but the nut is important. You've got two options here, you can either buy a blank nut, you can, well three options actually, you can either buy a brand new nut which hasn't got any in, any grooves in, and then you can do the spacing yourself, okay? But getting it out can be a bit of a pain, especially if you're an amateur or whatever, or if you're just starting out, and you might chip out the fretboard. Um, you could do that, you can fill them, you can use epoxy resin to fill all the gaps in, sand it down yourself, and then re-put the grooves in if you want to, or you can do it the way that I'm going to show you here, okay? Doing it this way ensures that you that you get a really thin gap between the strings, right? Which is what we want. We want a shreddable twelve string. We don't want a big fat chunky thing. Otherwise, we go out and buy one. Okay. Right, please excuse all the dirt and rubbish that's all over these things. I've been doing some work. Right. So we've got two two here. That, as we know, let me see if I can get focus. Is a standard guitar nut. You know, bottom E. Toppy all the way, and you can see the big gaps between them, yes? Right? Okay. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to put an extra groove. There is room, believe me, next to that one. We're going to put an extra groove there. We're going to put an extra groove there, extra groove there, extra groove there. Now, be careful, right? You want to make sure that your grooves are the same distance apart, okay? Maybe a slight difference if you've got the fat strings and stuff, but that's fine. So you can see that's how we're going to do it. Now you can do it, remember the files? We keep banging on about these files, don't we, eh? Right, and we used this for the actual, the saddles video before. Alright, so we've done that. Like I said, nice sharp file. You can go out and buy string files, it's up to you. You can use a hacksaw, you can also use a, a Stanley knife or, you know, like a, a box cutter knife if you're in America or whatever. Um, it's up to you. Just go easy. You don't have to buy specialised tools for it. Little at a time. Go too deep, I tell you, and you'll be snapping the nut in half the first time you tune up to concert pitch, and that's not what you want. <coughs> so, I've done ours, okay, because like I said, I've done a few of these in the past. Let me see if I can get some focus here. And these are the same, this squire neck here is actually the same size as this one here. But, can you see the extra groove? Yeah? No trickery here, guys. That's it. There isn't any trickery here. All I've done is, there's your standard old groove, and we've put another groove next to it. There's your standard old groove, there's the one next to it, and vice versa all the way along. Okay? Sometimes you have to tap these nuts back in a little bit, because you get a lot of play. See down here, there's a little bit of difference. And what I will do later is, we will knock this in slightly so that the nut sits a little bit further over so we get a bit more play and a bit more clearance. But like I said, the files, they come in set, set sizes really, but you can generally use the same one for every one if you haven't got the tools. Like I said, these wedge files are really good because they go down to like a razor edge down here. And all it's a matter of doing is starting off slow, getting yourself a start and working it. If you've got an old set of strings, yeah, or you know, all you need is a top E and a bottom E really. That's it. Just to test your gauge and stuff. Don't do it too much. You need this is something that needs to really be done properly all the way and dialed in when you string it for the first time. Because if you go too far you're gonna get buzzes and stuff and then you're gonna have to fill them or replace it if you've gone too far. So get yourself a start so you roughly know where you're going and you know where the string spacing is. Yeah? And that's basically gonna give you I haven't drilled the holes here yet, as you can see. But that's going to give you an idea of where your string's going to be. This is the reason why I said we were going to do the hole up here. Yeah? And put the machine heads here and drill through here. Because if you go down here and put them on this side, what's going to actually happen is it's going to do this and it's going to look naff in it. It's going to look crap and we don't want it to look crap. We want it to look good. So they're gonna the main string is gonna go here, the other string, one below it, is gonna go here. The main string is gonna go here, the other string's gonna go here. Do you know what I mean? So it's gonna all follow in line, they're all gonna be basically underneath each other, and that's what we want. We're not gonna interfere for tuning. So 
Remember this. Main string, you want to put a new one above it. Main one, you want to put it above it. Don't go on the other side of it because you're going to have a massive gap at the top here and you won't be able to fix it. So there's your main toppy, uh, your bottom, main bottom E, should I say. You're going to put one in just above it. All right? So do you see what I'm saying? Down, down, down. And then if we have to, I'll show you how to tap this out slightly to get a little bit more clearance on the edge of the fretboard. But that's how you do it for free. A little bit of time spent, and then we're going to have a shreddable 12 string by the end of it. Don't worry if she's looking a bit rough and she's a bit damaged at the moment. Like I said, I got given this free. It was just in a big box of parts that I had hold of. And I've never had a use for it, so that's what we're going to do with it today. All right? So like I said, standard nut, you can either buy one that's not got grooves in it and then put your own grooves in it. You can do that if you're feeling a little bit more adventurous and maybe you've got a tiny bit more money. <laughs> you can either fill it with epoxy resin or something, sand it off, or should I say file it down so it's the right height and then put your grooves in. If you're not really up to that, follow my lead, which is the cheaper option, and put your grooves in, like I said. All right, so main string, one above it. Main string, one above it, not below. Not below. Alright guys, so get on with that then. And then I'll meet you at the next video. Look after yourself. Mwah! Love you guys.